Hello my dear friends, my name is Sarita. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I have an, a brand introduction for you and this is of a small and fairly recent company called Outdoor Fellow. And I have three candles, it was a little bit of a mini haul from them, but I actually ordered them off of Macy's.com. I'm a huge Macy's shopper and I'm always looking at the candles they've got on offering. And they do tend to vary their candle offerings from brand to brand. So there will be a seasonal section and um, there will just be different kinds of candles offered. They have um, offered some from Root Candle recently. Um, I reviewed La Montagna. They had some from La Montagna. And right now they have Outdoor Fellow as well. And Outdoor Fellow, I've got three boxes here. So here's just one of them right here. Kind of looks like this. And it gives you a really nice like photograph of the candle, etc. cetera. Um, outdoor Fellow, there it is. Um, so I've got three of these. Obviously one of them is Tomato Vine. I would say that these are probably considered in the luxury price point. They are single wick candles um, and they're, I think they come in at $34. So definitely not cheap. However, I got them from Macy's for about, I wanna say it was like $17.50 or something like that. So I definitely got them on a really steep discount. They were not only on sale, but then I think they had like an extra 30% off friends and family. I'm not really sure what the situation is. I kind of had my eye on them a little bit and at that price point, I was willing to kind of take a look. So these just came in the mail a few days ago. I have tomato vine. This is an eight ounce and it is an apricot and, um, what is it? Apricot and coconut wax blend. I've never had an apricot one. Coconut wax, yes. All right, so then the second candle I have here is campfire. And lastly, I have juniper and grapefruit because I am a sucker for grapefruit and herbs and that is right up my alley. So these are the three that I got and I have smelled them and I'm just going to kind of give you a you know, first impression because I haven't burned any of them. And once I do burn them, then I'll have a lot more to say in that regard. So let's start out with tomato vine. I think it's probably the most special of the three and perhaps one of the ones that they're most proud of. So the um, owner and founder of the company is a Patrick Jones, and I believe he lives in New York City. And um, he has always been super conscious about giving 5% of his proceeds to a charity. Currently, it is, I think, the Bonaire um, Coral Relief Fund or something like that, um, uh, protecting and harboring the coral reefs in Bonaire, which is, I believe, a Caribbean island really close to Venezuela. Um, before that point, I think it was maybe national parks. I'm not really sure, but partly that goes in with like the whole ethos of the outdoor fellow and a lot of his candles, if not all of them, are inspired by natural or outdoor um, kind of uh, feels, smells, etc. So um, tomato vine, Actually, here, I'll just unbox one for you. So it's a really nice cardboard box. I mean, it's not special or anything. It's just, you know, a regular cardboard box. There are no lids on these candles, so this would make for really good storage. It's how I'm going to store it because I just, I do think, generally speaking, the scent and the candle itself will be preserved better if it's if it has some sort of lid on it. So this acts as a kind of lid. When you open it up, there's like this cardboard, hard cardboard coaster here, which gives you care and keeping notes for your candle. And then here's what the candle looks like here. Um, it's just, you know, a simple but nice um, glass vessel. Um, and it's also got the scent notes listed, which is really nice. I also have them listed here. And he had a blog post, particularly about tomato vine, when they originally um, uh, introduced the scent. 
So here's a little blurb. He says, tomato vine smells like a ripe tomato plant that creates a beautiful green herby aroma with top notes of lemon zest and sparkling pineapple and mid and base notes of basil leaves, juicy tomatoes, and a tomato vine accord. Tomato vine gives you all the summertime feels, which is really kind of a nice little description. So I don't have anything to add, except that he does say top notes, lemon zest, satsuma orange, sparkling pineapple, mid notes, basil leaf, juicy ripe tomato, galbanum, base notes, lily leaf, star jasmine, and tomato vine accord. And this is a really gorgeous and very balanced candle and all of the scent notes that he gives there um, are fairly detectable. There is something zesty and also something super green about this fragrance. So tomato vine is definitely coming across a lot and there is something that is a little bit sparkling. I don't know that I would pick it out as pineapple, but now that he mentions pineapple, that is exactly what it could be. It is a little bit of a like zesty citrus. He says lemon zest too, and some orange. It doesn't take away the candle, it just enhances the candle, that's it. And it makes it really come to life. Otherwise, there is a sweetness here, and the sweetness is coming from, I believe, like a, a tomato flesh. But I would say that the vines, it almost goes like in a green pepper way. It's a really true green vine. Oh yeah, it smells amazing. And with those top notes of citrus and pineapple, it just, for some reason, it smells like it's a garden that is being sun-baked. I don't know why the sun would smell, for instance, like a citrus. <laughs> but there's, the, because of the sparkling and the top bright notes of it, it just makes that entire like garden scene like a sunbathed one. It, it, it brightens the garden, both literally and figuratively. I'm really happy with this candle. I think it's fantastic. I don't know that I'm gonna burn it this summer. I have a tomato vine candle from Anthropology, which I've already talked about. And I think I may save this one and burn it next year with tomato vine from Anthropology and kind of do a compare and contrast. But if I get bored and I don't have anything else to review in like July, maybe I'll light them both this season. I really highly recommend Tomato Vine. If you can get it on a discount, great. But I think a lot of people are gonna like this. It's super unique. And I, it's one of the better Tomato Vine candles that I've smelled and there aren't that many out there. So I have a feeling this is well worth the price point and even better if you can get it on a discount. Okay, so let's talk about campfire right here campfire oh gosh when i smell this i just like want to smile and maybe it's because it smells like fall and fall is just a glorious time for candles across the board so here is campfire top notes sandalwood white smoke and bergamot like the bergamot should give you pause. It's not coming across like a whole lot. It doesn't go like men's cologne. Mid notes, birch tar, black rose, and incense. Base notes, smoked amber, charred cedar wood. There is a ton of wood in this, and that's apropos given that it's campfire, right? It's a, be it's a lot of exotic and like, intense wood notes though and and there isn't so much of a like charred or smoky vibe that's like taking over or overwhelming the um wood notes there that are just coming across super strong so cedar wood yeah it's a lot of cedar wood and it's just it's super authentic and then i think the sandalwood and the birch tar along with like the smoke and the, the smoked amber and the white smoke. Again, just enhancing. So in this case, the smoke is enhancing the wood rather than the reverse, or rather than it just being like a super smoky candle. There, I, 
camp, it's just, just bonfire or fire candles in general are super intriguing and cool. But at the same time, I've smelled a lot of them that I just thought to myself, well, this will make my house smell like it's on fire. And I'm not sure that that's what I really want, you know? So a, a lot of them almost smell like novelty candles in that respect. And I think the most successful ones are mixed with like vanilla or something creamy, a la like, um, what is the marshmallow fireside from Bath and Body Works, etc. This is one of the few ones that like makes me smile because it's super balanced. It's about as balanced as that tomato vine one is. It leans into the cedar wood and the cedar wood is coming across so beautifully and authentically and powerfully. And then like the smoke and the sandalwood and the amber, and you know I go a long way for a sandalwood amber candle. It's the sandalwood and the amber that are kind of like softening it down here. I'm not getting a whole lot of rose. Um, and the incense is muted. It's muted. Again, everything is just kind of supporting that wood smell. Um, which gives like a very like a log cabin kind of feel to it. It's honestly one of the best like fire candles I think I've ever smelled. And I wasn't sure I was going to like this because, you know, fire candles from this company called Outdoor Fellow. I thought it could just be like way too aggressive, way too intense, and it's super balanced. These two candles to me, if they're indicative of all at all of like the way that this company balances their scent profiles, I'm really impressed. There's a nuance, there's a restraint, and there's a thought and care about the way that each one of these scent notes play off of each other and interact with each other. So I think it's really great. This is gonna be amazing for fall. Um, and given its small size um, and its premium quality, I'm thinking that this will be a good blending candle. So create your own marshmallow fireside with this. I would put this in like my living room on a really cozy evening or something in one part of the house, which is like maybe more of my living room or my sitting room. And then I would put like way back in my bedroom or in my master bath, something like creamy and vanilla. I would probably do that stonewall home, um, warmed maple or something like that. So that the effect in the house would be of them both together. But then as I retreat closer to like nighttime, I would be like enveloped in that like sweetness coming from the outside as it were. Anyway, so amazing. Okay, this candle is a real toss up. This is um, the Juniper and Grapefruit. And I was, I was excited about this just because I am a huge grapefruit person and I love herbs. And um, there have been a few grapefruit herb candles come out from various different companies. Definitely Kringle was one of them this year. And um, I, I, for me, that grapefruit candle, although I liked it, was more grapefruit forward than um, rosemary forward, although a lot of people thought it was overwhelmed by rosemary. Um, and so I was hoping that this one was going to be super fresh, authentic, and balanced. And it's kind of weird. So the notes given here are grapefruit, for the top notes, grapefruit, juniper berries, Valencia orange, mid notes, green bergamot, eucalyptus, and anise seeds. And then base notes, forest pine, cedar wood, and musk. And then in the blog, um, Patrick Jones also talked about how this candle was inspired by a cocktail um, that he encountered a drink in the south of France, and it was called, and forgive my pronunciation, Genevre de Sud, I think, which means um, Junipers of the South. Um, and he mentioned that it was a very, like, citrus-forward cocktail with, you know, lemon and grapefruit and whatnot. And I assume juniper, maybe it has gin in it because gin is typically has a very um, juniper-forward profile. At any rate, when I smelled this candle out of the box, I was like, I don't think this is grapefruit juniper. It just smells to me like um, an herbal licorice. So it smelled to me like anise. 
and I had forgotten that Annis was even in the scent notes. So then I looked back and I was like, is there Annis in this candle? And sure enough, in the mid notes, down on the end, anise seeds. But it's competing with bergamot, grapefruit, juniper, orange, eucalyptus, pine, cedarwood. Like, <laughs> but to my nose, all it is is anise. It's just anise seeds. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, anise seeds, um, it's like, you know, the star anise, uh, uh, spice it looks like a star, you know, and you can take the seeds out and they can be ground into anise. Um, for those of you who are Italian, this smells like a pizzelle, okay? For those of you who are familiar, a pizzelle is like this like flat cookie that is put through a mold. So it's like a little, it's a molded flat cookie and it's very heavily scented of anise, anise oils, anise seed. And this smells like a pizzelle. It smells not like a synthetic or artificial pizzelle. I mean, this smells, it's a beautiful, beautiful anise seed smell. There's something sweet on the end of it, which almost feels a little like vanilla. And I know it. there's no vanilla in here or even like tonka. So I don't know. I, I, I just may be mis-smelling, mis-smelling that. But the, 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 the sweetness in it, the reason why it smells vanilla is because it seems like a little bit like creamy, which is great because you've got that herbal and then you have a little bit of a creaminess. Other than that, it's pretty much like a one dimensional linear, maybe two dimensional if you add in that vanilla. If there was like a butter note, <laughs> it would for sure go a little bit gourmand and people might really like that. I am not getting any citrus at all. So upon burning it, maybe it would come out, but I just find it odd how much citrus is supposed to be in it, and it should be in a citrus-inspired candle, and I'm not getting any citrus. All I'm getting is that beautiful, soft, sweet anise seed. And it's a nice anise seed candle, but I'm not really sure that I want an anise seed candle. I'm really going back and forth on this. I was gonna just return this one because I'd rather just get my money back or get like another candle. But because it's so unique, I mean, I can't think of a candle that is so sweet and authentic and is anise forward like this, that I'm wondering maybe I should just, maybe I should just keep it and see what it does upon burning. I don't really know. I can tell you though that the cold smell, you don't smell anything else. But if you're an Italian American, who enjoys pizzelles, you know? This might be a really nice, classy, pizzelle-like scent for you. And I can't say that it's not like lovely in its own way, just extremely unexpected and not at all balanced if in fact all of those notes are present and I trust that they are. So that's what I've got for you. That's the first impression here of this Outdoor Fellow. I noticed that on the website, they will give you 15% off of your first order if you sign up for their mailing list. And they've got all kinds of different ways that you can order a candle. You can order off of their website. Um, it is free shipping over $40. So if you're getting two candles, that's great. Otherwise, it's a flat $5 for shipping. Weirdly, they also allow you to order it through Amazon, which gives you free shipping regardless of what it is that you are buying. So there's that. And then also they resell them in various other retailers. I know of Macy's. So I'm gonna link both their website and the Macy's websites down below. And as soon as I review or burn these, I will have more up-to-date and nuanced reviews for you about how they performed in that regard. But I like it, I'm impressed, and I'm an outdoor fellow myself. So I enjoy the botanics, I enjoy the really authentic outdoor experiences that some candle companies are able to offer. So I'd like to see how these perform. They are a little on the spendy side, so they better perform. <laughs> pretty, pretty well. And I am hoping for the best. See you in the next one.